Jesus was a communist feminist icon. That's right, my friends, did I get your attention? We're back in Hearts of Iron 4, and what you heard was not a lie. As everyone is already aware, the new DLC, Trial of Allegiance, came out, and there are a variety of very fun new nations to play here in South America. Or I say fun new nations, it means that the nations that have been boring and sitting there in a region of the world not touched for eight years now finally actually has some fun things to do. And in our last episode, we played Brazil, which was absolutely broken. But much like its modern-day economy, there's another state that is equally as broken. Argentina. Something that is very clearly a absolute beacon of stability. Yeah, after the previous video in which I did Brazil, I posted another poll here on the community page, and by an overwhelming margin, out of like five options, 54% of the vote was specifically for Argentina. So here we are, with an absolute dapper-looking fella in charge here. How nice. In 1930, the cabinet of Hippolito Yigoyen, 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 that guy, was overthrown in the first military coup since the adoption of the Argentine constitution, ushering in what was known as the infamous decade. Argentina must navigate a rapidly changing world where great powers threaten the fragile peace that has been held since the end of the Great War, and what is the more prominent threat, the gathering storm in Europe, their very own neighbors, or themselves. <laughs> or themselves. The fact that they put in an or themselves. Yeah, yeah, that seems to be the downfall of many countries in Latin and South America. Not a neighbor, themselves. Let's jump into it, shall we? Argentina in 1936 starts out pretty much the same as the other countries here in South America. Technologically quite weak, but simultaneously with a somewhat decent industry base? Not really, but still kind of, sort of. There are plenty of negative effects that are stacked up upon us here with blatant political corruption, which at least gives us a little bit more political power, but oh my god, does that hurt us? Because, you know, yeah, no one no one has ever heard of a South American country suffering from political corruption. That, that clearly can't be a thing. We, of course, have the National Spirit of the Monroe Doctrine to deal with the United States, and we have the roca Rinsiman Treaty, which that is an agreement that is a significant trade pact between Argentina and the United Kingdom that was signed on May 1933 that guaranteed Argentina a fixed share in the British meat market. In exchange, Argentina agreed to restrictions with regard to trade and currency exchange, preserving the United Kingdom's commercial interest in the country. Yes, for those of you who don't know, and obviously this is going on my gaming page, but I did an entire video on the fall of the economy within Argentina and how it's just this absolutely crazy shit show that has been the case for the past, well, two centuries at this point, pretty much. But for like half of its history, the greatest export that came out of Argentina was literally beef, like just meat products, beef. And the number one purchaser and investor of that was uh, the United Kingdom. So they, they were heavily involved in all of that before everything absolutely crashed in World War One. Fun times. Research wise, from the very beginning, we need to go ahead and set ourselves up with just a little bit more industry to be able to produce things and also research since we're going to be behind on that here for a while. Civilian factory wise, we need to go ahead and get a little bit of infrastructure built up in here. And military factory wise, we actually start out producing some small airframes. So that's something we actually start out with planes, which is nice. But the thing that I'm really going to need a lot of here right now is I'm going to need guns. So we're going to slap more onto there. And simultaneously, we're going to go ahead and set ourselves up with the basic infantry. Now, focus tree wise, Argentina has a very interesting tree. Of course, it has the classic things of what you're going to do for communist. If you're going to be going down democracy, if you're going to go down, well, let's see, what is this? Is this monarchy or is this like, oh, <laughs> uh, uh, the historical path, if you will, for Juan Perón. And then Besides that, we have our industrial focus over here, which actually Bank of Argentina from the very beginning is a pretty decent effect. So that's one thing to consider. And of course, our military, Air Force, you know, Navy, these kinds of things. And what I found in here, and I guess this is a mistake that I made when I was over in the uh, in the Brazil video, is that it was my understanding. I thought that Brazil was the one, the only one that actually had that focus tree with Air Force that gave them a lot of insane bonuses. But no, apparently all of the South American countries have the option to create an insane air force, which is, that's, that's, that's pretty big, not gonna lie. I mean, you compare some of those bonuses to things like in comparison to with the United States and, and its insane air power and what? The only thing that it gets are like research bonuses to be able to research cast and other stuff faster. And then besides that, it has like, whoa, whoa, what? 10% range. T the United States as a bonus gets 10% range as well as production cost bonuses to produce aircraft. That is it. And it's for bombers. In comparison, Argentina or any of the South American countries, if we're going to build an air force, if we were going to do that and build just a dedicated bombing machine, can get a whopping 20% air range bonus and 15% strategic bombing bonus and an additional 5% range. So that's 25% range in the case of strategic bombers or really any, this doesn't just affect bombers, this is any plane whatsoever. An additional 10% attack if we were going to be doing from that side or if we were doing army sport, which is already 10%, that means that that is a good 20% attack 
attack bonus and 15% defense. I'm going to say this right now for anyone who is watching who may be at Paradox if you see anything like this, but I love these bonuses. I love that there's actually something that you have in here that you can specialize and all the other nations need to be rebalanced to have something kind of similar at least because as it stands, oh my God, the old nations just cannot compare with the sheer air power and ability of the new ones. But either way, I wasn't kidding in the beginning of this video when I said that Jesus was a communist feminist icon. The communist path for Argentina is, oh my God, is this thing broken? Almost as broken as Argentina is. It's been clear for the past decade that politics in Argentina have been a mess. Our democracy died with Ippolito y Gro y y damn it this name, and has wrought nothing but chaos and corruption within the Argentinian government. It's time we start looking towards a rapid and necessary reform to get our country back on the right path. That's gonna give us some political power, more communism. It's gonna naturally decrease stability, of course. But hey, at least it removes political corruption because no one would ever expect that a communist society would ever be corrupt. The really weird part of this, though, is that it also is going to modify infamous decade by 20% stab, 12% war support. It's going to reduce political advisor cost. Like, it's actually going to give us some insane bonuses. Take the rest of my army and, yeah, honestly, I don't need it. Go ahead and delete that. We don't need an army for revolution. Who needs that? I will say, though, that our leader spirit is um, actually quite fascinating. The fraudulent industrialist. So it hurts stability because, I'm mean, guessing, you know, it's probably a bunch of corruption, but construction speed plus 15% and more political power gain. That's actually pretty decent bonus. I'm not going to lie. Okay, with call to reform done, that means we're going to get some political power immediately after that. Political advisor, we are going to get, where is he? Oh, wait, no, we can't actually get anything yet until we get to the next one, isn't it? Yeah, that, that's it. Invite Gildi back to Argentina. Rafaldo Gildi was a prominent communist in Argentina who unfortunately had to flee the country due to prosecution from the government. As we start to shift the attitude towards the left in Argentina, perhaps it's time we offered a pardon to Gildi and invite him back to his homeland. Yes, of course, we're going to go ahead and do that. Even though at this point I could go down on to partial mobilization, which is a pretty good thing for me, I'm not going to do that yet because I need to save the political power specifically to get this guy as an advisor. All right, with Gyoldi being invited back, that means he now appears here as a socialist writer, which is going to give me 10% recruitable population factor, of which you're going to see how broken all this is going to be much later, and more importantly, plus 0.1 communism per day. Awesome. We're going to take that, and then immediately afterwards, legitimize the PCA. The Partido Comunista de Argentina is the primary communist party in Argentina. From its inception, the party maintained an alignment with the Communist Party of the Soviet Union, often generating friction with the rest of Argentina's left. Yeah, because I don't think they like the idea of purges very much. However, now that we are in need of drastic change to end the infamous decade, perhaps it's time to legitimize the party in the Argentinian government. As soon as we get 165 political power, we go down here to partial mobilization, get ourselves prepared, and that means we can actually start to get some construction up here set. Also, I realize I'm not going to need civilian factories very much. The thing that I'm going to want to do after this is I want some mills. We're going to need a lot of those as quick as we can. With the PCA done, that means the next step after that is to either reach out to the Soviet Union, which will give me five Gant vanguard forces when the Civil War begins, which is right here, Viva la Revolución, or we can unite the workers of Argentina. I mean, technically speaking, we could do both, but really, I only care about doing this, which is going to hurt my stability for a bit, but it will increase communism, and we need to increase that as much as possible. We have to get to 60% popularity as soon as we can. With Unite the Workers of Argentina done, that means we are steadily building this up nice and rapidly, so we're actually going to reach that fairly quick. We cannot do anything else here, and there really is no point in doing reach out to the Soviet Union, because we're going to completely cheese the Civil War system in the first place. So, that means instead actually working on an economy. As everyone knows, the communists love banks. Established by the six acts of Congress in 1935, the Banco Central de la República Argentina replaced Argentina's currency board. Its president, Ernesto Bosch, or Bosch aims to develop the bank and help to kickstart our economy to help us finally, finally, start recovering financially from the Great Depression, which actually gives us a ludicrously big 20% research bonus to our industry. That is, that is massive, as well as reducing our consumer goods. That's actually an incredibly powerful effect for uh, an industrial MIO to have. The United Nations embargo? Pfft, yeah, I'll embargo Italy. Give me a little bit more stability. I'll take that. That's perfectly fine. And as soon as that is done, we can go ahead and get that MIO for a cheap 50 political power, which is massive. And that's going to help us with the research of everything. Next step after this is going to be industrial expansion, which is going to give us a civilian factory as well as some research bonuses, which is all well and good. Because once we complete that, we might have enough. Maybe once we finish this focus, we should be able to complete the next part. Maybe. Maybe. It's going to be, it's going to take a little bit of time. And with the next 100 political power that we have, military staff, we're going to need one of these guys. Army experience, army offense. Let's get that ticking. Now we'll just stack up these research bonuses here, which is all well and good for us. 
Okay, we built up a decent surplus of this so far. Now, I am actually going to need to start trading for some stuff. We'll buy things from the United States for now. It doesn't It doesn't really matter. In fact, actually, no. Why would I even support them? That doesn't make any sense from this. I'll just buy them from the Soviet Union. We're going communist as it is. We save up all of our research because we're going to be getting a two 40% research bonuses here in about 20 days. Or nine days. I can't count. And that means we can go ahead and use that to boost up our construction as well as immediately after this... Concentrated industry. Where are we at focus-wise here? 15. Ah, we are so close. Okay, we're not going to exactly get that fast enough. I'd say next step after this, rapid industrialization. A lot of Argentina remains in, as rural lands, but the way forward in the 20th century is the act of urbanization. By developing our cities, we can convince more people to move there, meaning that we will gain a significant increase in the workforce for our highly industrial centers. Three civvies. Actually, not bad. That's pretty nice. We'll go ahead and use those. And in the meantime, I will need to continuously build up my military industry here. So here we are, late February 1937, and my friends, the fun can begin. Viva la revolution. The time has come for us to send an ultimatum to the government of Argentina and bring forth the winds of change needed to transform our nation into a true socialist state. If things go well, this will end peacefully and the government will change hands with ease. However, there's always the chance that things will not go down without a fight. Because not technically speaking, if I wanted to, because of the rapid changes that we've actually implemented, I could technically just simply switch over to communism without ever actually having a civil war. That's something that I very could easily do because we we're going to have an election in November of 1937. And from that, I could just, you know, not do this and instead focus on building up my economy. I could do it, but no. I want to do things faster. Okay, here we are about 10 days prior to the revolution breaking out in the first place. And what we're going to go ahead and do now is we're going to go to the international market and we're just going to start selling basically all the equipment that we have. We don't really need any of this stuff here. So why would I even bother? Mark that up for a very high price, throw it onto the international market and let's just see if anyone is willing to buy it. Oh, hey, look, Portugal. Yeah, you can you can buy all my stuff here from me. Now civil war begins. We had literally no equipment whatsoever, except for like, you know, 200 odd guns. And then I can immediately go back to the international market, go to where I was trying to sell some equipment, and I can uh, go ahead and take all that back now, shall I? I can also simultaneously immediately cancel my contract with Portugal, so I get the artillery back too. Of course, we own the majority of the country, which means it's going to be really easy for me to now take all this excess equipment that I have and simply go, hey, all these uh, cavalry divisions that require, you know, a thousand equipment each, let's just, let's just go ahead and get some of those here, you know, it, let's not worry about it. In the meantime, we can't do anything until the civil war here actually ends, so that means next step, capitalizing on the beef industry, which is going to decrease our consumer goods by 15% and increase infrastructure speed by 15%. Because again, just like I said at the beginning of this video, Argentinian beef is one of our primary exports, especially to the United Kingdom. We should capitalize on this and expand our ranching capabilities and ensure that our delicious meat is known worldwide. Yes. The immediate next step after that, go ahead and get a political advisor. Let's see, we are going to want... Well, at this point, literally any one of these really awesome experts that we get here. This is this is actually really cool. Argentina gets a lot of bonuses when it comes to what kind of political advisors they can get. I mean, are you kidding me? Minus 15% consumer goods and 5% factory output? That is massive. This socialist economist really knows what he's doing with the economy. That's a first. The United States attempting to isolate Argentina. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um... Thanks, buddy. I appreciate it. I don't care. As soon as we reach 20%, beautiful, we can go ahead and spawn all these troops out. Excellent. Throw all these cavalry into an army, which, let's see, I have this guy. You're a cavalry officer. I'll take you. And we're going to need a commander. I'd say Fanny Edelman. We can actually get a woman in charge as a, as a field marshal. That is actually fascinating. We're going to go ahead and promote you just because, you know, Jesus was obviously a feminist communist icon. And we're just going to go and rapidly finish everything off here. And we just need to organize all the cavalry. Cavalry, have them take all the little spots here throughout the country, and from there, it's not really going to matter. We're going to be able to easily take over everything, all in rapid order. Wait a minute, were you actually able to recruit some units? You were. Interesting. I did not actually expect you to be able to get anything. Let's see, that's capitalized the beef, but we need to make sure, and beautiful, Argentina is annexed. We are able to take all their equipment, which honestly wasn't all that much, but it was so fast and easy to be able to do, and we actually got to keep the majority of our equipment in our country, which is then going to be useful for activity. 
activities. Peaceful activities, I promise. Well, either way, because we did that so rapidly, that means that we're now going to have the option to be able to choose our destiny, to either align ourselves with the Soviets and join the Comintern, or do our own thing. And I kind of like doing that more. Because check this out, Fanny Elderman. She is the one who becomes the leader of our country as a feminist revolutionary, giving us a whopping 2% additional recruitable population, plus additional 0.1 communism support per day. And with the revolution a grand success, it's time to decide how we want to shape the Republic of Popular Argentina's future. Comrade Fanny Edelman has been a staunch supporter of the PCA for many years and has taken strides in fighting for women's rights in the Republica Popular Argentina. Many see her as fit to lead our country from here on out, bringing the Republica Popular Argentina, which I don't know why it keeps on saying it in the full thing and not just like RPA, into a new age of prosperity. Just watch my friends, just watch. This is, this is gonna get really broken really fast. <laughs> and here it is my friends, the beginning of glory. Comrade Edelman is in charge, who is a feminist revolutionary and looking kind of sad about it to be honest, but either way, that's going to give us some awesome options. We can get workers' rights, which is going to add state unions that is going to increase our production efficiency cap by 15%, and our construction for military and civilian factories, and stability, which is awesome, but also women in the industry, which is an additional 15% efficiency cap, and also plus, or not plus, minus 15% consumer goods. So that is, that is so massive. You combine that with support the farmers, which is going to decrease consumer goods further by an additional 10% and increase factory output by 10%. And we are quite literally creating a feminist workers paradise, which then frees up all the men to go and die in war. But we'll get to that in a little bit. First things first, we're going to beeline down workers rights because we need to get down here to socialist researchers and actually get ourselves a research slot. The further we wait or the more we wait, the further behind that we're going to become because unfortunately, again, we, we literally start out with two research slots and that's it. So it's important then that we produce more like anti-unionist pure anarchist, which is interesting. <laughs> Minus 5% consumer goods, again, and plus 10% construction speed? Hell yeah, I will take that. Are you kidding me? Of course. After getting ourselves some civilian factories from reform our industry, that means we can then empower the FJC. The Federación Juvenil Comunista is a youth and revolutionary political organization that was founded in order to promote the PCA's policies among the Argentinian youth. In order to secure our socialist ideology throughout the nation, it would be wise to involve the children of our country as early as we possibly can. Yes, communism in preschool. Sharing is caring, my friends. I'm sure that we all read the story of the rainbow fish, you know what I'm talking about. This is going to give me a whopping 2.5% recruitable population, plus 10% recruitable population factor, and 5% war support and more communism support. This is insane. By the end of this, you're going to see, we're going to have like half of our country inside of the military, and we're going to basically be on volunteer only still. Which is awesome then, because now immediately I can go down here to war economy, and boom, we're going to be producing stuff even faster. With the FJC now taken, that means the next step after this, we have an option, either state atheism, in which we are going to hurt our stability, but it's going to give us more war support and research speed, or liberation theology. Given the long history of Catholicism in the Republic of Popular Argentina, because for whatever reason we have to keep on saying that, and its importance for its life and its citizens, many priests have started to adopt a new form of Christianity, known as liberation theology, as a reaction to the ideological shift within the RPA. Given the ideas of liberation theology align with a revolutionary movement, it would be wise for us to adopt this sect of the church. Yes, this this is going to increase our stability by 20%. It's going to increase our political power gain, but it's going to hurt our research speed. Now, normally in these circumstances, I would not go with this. I would go for the increased research speed, but there is a very, very vital reason as to why between the two options, liberation theology is actually the better one here. That being is that soon we're going to need to accrue as much political power as we can possibly get. So this plus the stability is actually incredibly strong for us. Jesus. The communist feminist icon, my friends. With liberation theology done, that means we can now go down here to socialist researchers. And with that, we finally, finally in 1938, get an extra research slot. Oh my God. So here we are, May of 1938. And finally, it's at this point that we can start going down women in the industry and beelining down our political path. As you've noticed by this point, we haven't really done anything on the economic side, short of the very stuff like here in the beginning. And that's because largely you don't need to do any of this. The political focus tree for Argentina already provides a bunch of factories and insane bonuses that we get to, at this point, reduce our consumer goods down to a whopping 11%, and that's it. So there's really no point. Just go down women in industry, help yourself out even further, and then from here, beeline down the political path to be able to uh, start some spicier things, so to speak. In the meantime, accrue as much political power as possible. For too long, women have been expected to stay home and care for the family. If a woman is able to be the leader of our country, then it is only right that we allow to work in other industries too. This will only serve to aid the Republica Popular Argentina 
Argentina's economic future as it will greatly expand our workforce and cheapen the labor market. Next up after this, socialist volunteers. Honestly, we don't need this. If we were going to be helping other places, like if I was going to be sending efforts like to the Soviet Union to help them against the Germans, this would probably be a pretty valuable thing. But at this point, that's not needed. Instead, we can simply support the farmers and move on from here to the Buenos Aires conference. And oh my God, are we going to get even more bonuses? Like genuinely, Argentina has some of the most bonuses that I have ever seen in any nation in this game, like from the beginning. Not a single one of these is negative at all. The only thing is liberation theology weakens your research speed a bit, but that's it's it's not like it's a huge enough uh, like matter at all. Even the infamous decade gives us 10% stability. <laughs> like what, what? Next up, the Buenos Aires Conference. Now that we have started to stabilize our country, we must be careful to not allow our leadership to trigger the same near dictatorship trap that our previous government fell into. As such, a socialist conference has been called in Buenos Aires with the intention to discuss and elect the next leader for the Republic of Popular Argentina. I like how it actually explains that it's going to give us two different options here. We can either keep Fanny Edelman in power, which is going to allow us to do the liberate the continent war goal here, or we can do the the Antonio Soto, which allows us to focus on developing just our country internally, and that is literally it. But you know, of course, as you said, that Jesus was a communist feminist icon, so there's really only one option. At long last, our new communist government has reached a level of stability in which we are open to the first Buenos Aires conference. And here we can decide the future of the PCA and who might fit be fit to run the country in the years to come. This year, we have two strong candidates, either our current leader, Fanny Edelman, who will continue along the status quo, offering stability and focusing on the Republic of Popular Argentina on the world stage, or Antonio Soto, on the other hand, a former Patagonian rebel who believes that we should be working towards making it completely independent, within an anarcho-syndicalist model. Who should take up to the mantle of Premier? Well, Fanny Edelman. Because with her in charge, we gain a base of 20% stability, meaning even at war, we're still likely to be around 100% stability, which is insane. So yes, Fanny Edelman is going to stay in power and give us even more political power that we're going to continuously stack here. And immediately after that, we get the option of liberating the continent. There is no place for other world ideologies on the South American continent, as they stand as a threat to our socialist state. If they will not join us, then we must move to liberate their people as fast as we can and bring them under the protective banner of the Republica Popular Argentina. Gain the annex war goal on all non-communist nations in South America. Which, oh, wouldn't you know it? That's all of them. Hmm. Liberate the continent is going to give us war goals on literally everyone around us. So that means that the first thing that we're going to need to start doing is taking out all of our smaller neighbors, Uruguay, Paraguay, after that Chile, just the different things around us that are going to not have a significant population, but also simultaneously, they will have built up a significant amount of equipment during this time that they cannot use. Thus, we're going to use that equipment that they have to further liberate the rest of the continent. And to that end, what we've been building up this entire time, since it's super cheap and easy to use in the beginning, especially in South America, is a pure cavalry army. There's really nothing for us to do here, so we're just using the basic template that they give. And on top of that now, we're going to add a engineer company and also support artillery. I should have enough. Well, I don't have enough support equipment, but at this point, that's not really going to matter. We're just going to go ahead and build that because we should be getting that here pretty shortly. And at the same time, we're going to do officer corps and we are actually going to get proper heritage. Normally, I don't do this, but 5% additional attack plus less supply combat penalties. Consider that we're fighting in South America, this is actually incredibly valuable to have in the beginning, especially when we're using a pure cavalry force. But with Liberate the Continent, that means we have war goals on everyone around us. So Uruguay, sorry, you're gone. Immediately after finishing this focus tree, which is already an incredibly powerful one as it is, we get two options, which both are incredibly broken. And they're not even options. They're, you can choose both of these things. They're not exclusive. We can integrate the Americas, which in turn is going to give us 10% additional recruitable population factor. It's going to give us more stability, more more war support, more everything, and allow us to integrate all the states in South America as cores, but also Ocasa Escalarta, which is, oh my god, this thing is so broken. We will become known as the South American Socialist Republics, and it will grant us an additional 30% recruitable population factor, and here's the thing, here's the most broken part about this, minus 25% supply consumption. That is across the board for all units, minus 25% supply consumption. Do you have any idea just how incredibly broken this is? The Scarlet Sunset to anyone who opposes the global revolution is going to be a reality because you could literally stack infinite bodies on a border and just press. There's never going to be any kind of su real supply issue, especially if we get the logistics support company, which we will have the industry after this to do. So I'm going to show just how broken this whole thing is. In fact, because of where we're fighting, I'm actually going to do the Ocasa Escalarta one first. That's just what I'm 
going to go ahead and do. And you can already see manpower wise that we have a whopping 6.3% recruitable population and we are still, still on volunteer only. And that's only going to increase. Immediately after this, we just get to very quickly and easily push into Uruguay. Like they're, they're not, they're not going to be able to stop us at all. With that, they are conquered. We're going to seize all their equipment, which is going to be pretty valuable because that's a bunch of support equipment I needed. Transport planes, which are great to have. And we get to seize their entire Navy and country. Beautiful. Next up after that, we move our fine to the north and we're going to immediately take out Paraguay. Paraguay? Again, no. Paraguan. Go gone. 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 They're gone. Yep. Good mind, Paraguay. Go ahead and seize all your equipment. Thank you so much for participating in this. I really do appreciate it. You are uh, dead. Very dead indeed. And it's in Argentina in 1939. Because of all the bonuses that we've managed to acquire from this, we have a whopping plus 75% factory output, meaning anything, anything that we get along here, we can just produce essentially infinite amounts of. We will never, ever run out of equipment, it seems. You combine that with a minus 25% uh, like supply consumption, and it's even better. Because that, we have Okaska Escalarta, which also, on the note, I completely forgot to say, this also gives me a, a base plus 10% attack, which is awesome. <laughs> Meaning that counting my advisor and everything else that I had, that's an additional plus 20% attack for every single division, which is insane. Next up on here, integrate the Americas. The ruling classes and the territories that we've liberated from the capitalist and fascist rot may continue to rebel against us if we don't take action to integrate them into our growing coalition. Chile is a little bit cold in here, or is that just your dead body because it's so Chile? Ah, uh, all right. Yep, time to remove you so I can uh, hide the shame. Yep, the most annoying part of Chile is continuously fighting through all these little spots in the mountains, having to try and surround all their individual little units and then proceed to attempt to crush them, which is its own little fun thing entirely. Quick, while they do not have the units in here, push, 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 push. Come on, there we go. Chile falls. Go ahead and take all of you. Excellent. Take, yoink, yoink, yoink. Yoink. Combine all the navies into one. Beautiful. That, my friends, is looking significantly better now. And here it is, beginning of April 1939. And Czechoslovakia may be gone, but we simultaneously now gain the ability to start integrating all of South America. With every single state that we've conquered, it doesn't matter. Now, this is the reason why I said from the beginning why we need to go down the Christian side of the communist path, because that additional 20% political power is going to be necessary in order to be able to integrate things as fast as possible and actually get all the resources sources, get all of the factories, get all everything that all these have. Because unfortunately, each one of these things costs 75 political power. And then on top of doing so, when we get it, it's each one is going to reduce the political power gain for 35 days by 15%, meaning it's very slow to try to integrate. So you're going to want to try and integrate or get as much political power as possible before it is that you try to integrate everything else. So like in this case, we're able to core half the lands around us, which in turn is going to cause I'm going to be losing a whole bunch of political power as you can possibly see. But but simultaneously, I will actually be able to get tons of cores and not have to worry about garrisoning any of this anymore. Immediately after that, well, there's nothing else for us to do on the political side except free the world. And since I'm going to get all of those factories now, that means that I can go over here and make a beeline down to technical schools, which is going to allow me to get another research slot as soon as I have 45 of those. So, production initiative. Here we go. Bolivia, you also barely have any troops as it is. So, like, really, none of this is going to matter. No, I can just, uh, I can just delete you off the map. Thank you. Goodbye. Brazilian good neighbor policy. Yes. Yes. The Brazilian government, Vargas, has announced that their government intends to see greater cooperation with the nations of South America, being dubbed the good neighbor policy. Uh, yeah. Your neighbors are kind of shrinking in number there, buddy. Especially since after coring all that land around me, I got a whopping, uh, like 10 additional mil military factories. I'm also realizing at this point that I completely forgot to research anything for a doctrine, and I should have done that because that probably would have helped me. Uh, at this point, I can't get the political advisor, so, you know, we're going to spend a little bit extra, but yeah, superior firepower just to increase the ability of our troops to actually fight and, and do things. I, sh I should have done that earlier. Yep, there goes Bolivia. Go ahead and take all of you, all your equipment. Thank you very much. I will gladly take all that. Yoink. And that means on the side, really the only one left is Brazil itself, which now after stealing all that equipment and pumping things out. I have 37 units. How many does Brazil have? Maybe a max of 27. Yeah, this is going to be easy. Yeah, Brazil, there's uh, there, there's no stopping me. What is easily the greatest threat to Argentina in this entire region is two states. One, Brazil, because of course, it's the big one that takes a long time to conquer. And the second one, as we all know from when we saw the Brazil playthrough, it's Peru, because it's an absolute nightmare to try and take everything through the mountains. At least what happens is the earlier that you try and take them, the better it is for you. Not to mention the fact that the more that you're able to uh, take and surround them, the more that their troops have to spread out. So if you can build up insane numbers, 
numbers like what we are trying to do here and i got what 20 more divisions that are in in the uh in the queue here that means once we take out brazil we're going to be able to surround the entirety of peru and break through on all sides hopefully in the meantime just yeah throw ourselves at the enemy because that's really all that we can do here there we go surround a bunch of their units go ahead and push all in here into the south and the more of these that we can surround the better it's going to be for us because honestly there's no real worry about at this point we can completely overwhelm them with numbers they still have to defend other parts of their border which means i'm just able to push in here myself as they further weaken themselves and just completely crush all of their units that means that very quickly we can just quickly run along the border here and try and take out as much of the coastline as possible which is where all of their really big cities are yep there goes poland refusing the ultimatum so that's going to happen over on that side and we get technical schools get another research slot beautiful there we go come on come on move on in further we just need to go and surround all their divisions thank you and perfect that's even more trapped thank you thank you brazil thank you for just making this so incredibly easy for me we in the meantime are just going to get continuously more and more factories which is going to be awesome for me and all we have to do is continuously throw those into mills because really those are the only resources that we need here now is just continuously producing more and more mill equipment to be able to pump out more and more stuff yep things are heating up in europe but it does not matter because brazil has capitulated to me it actually sucks that uh, i had to destroy as many of their units as i did because that means i'm not going to get all that equipment but there's not really much you can do when trying to take out something as massive as brazil and at least in the end the south american socialist republics grows ever stronger with the completion of these divisions that means i now have two full stacks of 24 for armies which are awesome and that means 48 versus what how many divisions does peru have at this point maybe a max of 28 which still defending the mountains is awesome for them but there's no way in hell they're actually going to be able to defend their entire border it's that easy here and with technical school done now i could technically go and work on the economy but all of these are only temporary bonuses which i don't necessarily need except for the more steel and aluminum which is nice but i'm conquering all this other territory so i don't actually need to get this i won't need population and this other stuff because you know i'm already getting cores on everything in south america but the argentine metropole does give me 10 percent research and five percent recruitable population which that is actually quite nice the big bonus that i want to get though is instead of revisiting the treaty that we had which is going to you know decrease my consumer goods even more which is awesome mind you don't get me wrong uh the next one revise the treaty is going to reduce my supply consumption by a further five percent and reduced division attrition oh, that's going to be a whopping minus 30 percent supply use for all argentine forces so where is cut ties with britain then where, where is that on what side is that oh can i not do that oh i'm guessing that must be the fascist thing here to do then okay so that is not able to be done here then we can only revise the treaty which is still you know something okay i'll go ahead and get that then because it's 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 nice to be able to have all right i, I don't have to trade nearly as many things to my uh to my market so that way i'll actually be able to retain more of my goods next up on here the removal then of peru beautiful need to make sure that we hold them all in place so i can push further down here continuously please and thank you yeah and just like that peru um th there's no way they can hold you simply got to push in through the south a little bit here past the point where they you know they spread their line and then immediately as you pressure them just surround and destroy it's 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 actually way easier to do with overwhelming numbers next up on here i would normally focus very strongly down air force but there is one thing that we want to get prior to all this and that is that we are going to go down the Ercito Argentino and we are going to do this until we get to invest in the motor industries. The reason why we want to do this is because I know I could do division org plus division defense on core territory plus 5%, which is awesome, but invest in the motor industry is going to reduce the production cost of motor, of truck by 15%. And you're going to see why that's important here. We're uh we're going to be building up a little bit of a surplus. Next up on here, go ahead and take out Ecuador. If we can go and move down here, here nice and fast that'll be beautiful for me bears falls and so does ecuador we can seize all their equipment nice and that means the only one actually left here in the south is colombia and venezuela along with the little colonies that we have here with the uh allies but that's not necessarily going to matter just yet after all we're going to have to wait for the germans to be at war with the soviets before potentially we can do anything down here or i say that we're probably need to wait for the germans to basically be falling goodbye then colombia yeah we just need to rapidly race through you as quickly as possible hopefully before you have a chance to try and join the allies because we do not want that to happen here there we go and with bogota that means the fall of colombia we have now seized almost the entirety of it all that remains is little old venezuela 
Kayla. And we have just been grinding against the enemy here the entire time. Our generals are leveling up so rapidly and getting all these awesome trades because, again, we have such an infinite amount of population and from this equipment that, you know, it's 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 the it's the feminist thing to just throw your men's lives away. Honestly, at this point, there's no stopping us. We can just continuously generate as much equipment as we want. We're up to 55 military factories already. In 1940, as freaking Argentina, and that's only going to increase. In fact, at this point, I'm not even going to integrate or core any of the territories that I have. I'm going to just wait, save up the political power, because every single time I hit that button, it's going to decrease how much I get by 15%. So I'm just going to wait and save up a whole group, like, you know, four, five, six at a time, and then do it then. In fact, if I really wanted to, I would just, right now, not even choose a focus. Not even do that. Just let myself build up political power. I could do that. But where would be the fun in that? No, the only thing that is set for us is to kill. Oh, 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 oh wait a minute. Did I see that Venezuela joined the Axis? Really? Really? Well, hmm, that's a spicy thing now, isn't it? Huh, well, not that it matters, actually. Wait, hold on. They, they called them to war, I'm sure, but they never actually joined the conflict, so I guess I just win then. Well, thank you, Venezuela. That, uh, that certainly helped me then, I guess. The thing is, now, at this point, I... I basically have nothing to do except go and accrue political power and do these kinds of things, you know? Already on volunteer only, I'm at a whopping 9% recruitable population, which is out of 47 million, but that's going to get significantly better. We basically become the China of South America, a massive factory booming economy, and then on top of that, infinite population that we can throw at the enemy. Wait a minute, I'm just realizing that I am I automatically still get war goals against Honduras, Haiti, Cuba, Nicaragua, Costa Rica, Panama, and Guatemala. I get war goals against everyone, basically. Oh my... Oh man, that is nice. All right, hold on, hold on. Let's keep this war train going if we can. Yep, there goes Panama. Go ahead and seize all them. Thank you very much. Wait, Panama joined the allies. Nope, 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 nope. They, they, they died first. Uh-uh, perfect. All right, thank you. Yeah, not running into that risk. Thank you very much. Next up on here, Costa Rica. Beautiful. Yeah, they're not going to last. No, no, no. We're just, we're moving in. No, you're not joining the allies. You're not joining the allies. Uh-uh, uh-uh. No, you, you die. You die before that. Thank you. Thank you very much for your beautiful a attempt, Costa Rica. Oh, damn. And in the process of trying to build more casts, I ended up actually replacing the plane that I was building, which in turn just completely reset all of its t t t production. Thanks. Great. Great. Well, that means we're just going to need more factories then. There goes Nicaragua. So, okay. Our plan from this here is I want to see just how much damage we're going to be able to do here from the sky. I know that we're probably going to be able to easily get air superiority wherever it is that we are, because there's no way that the allies, when we inevitably go to war with them, are going to be able to muster nearly the same kind of force. So if we go and just go full army support, just as much attack and cast as we possibly can, we could theoretically concentrate all of our cast and just logistic strike them to hell down in Mexico and eradicate them. But to do that, I need to make sure that I win the air war in the first place, which we're, we're going to need to to boost things up here for. Now, at the point that we were at in this campaign, it, it's about time that we start slowing down and consolidating because in order to be able to push up thing into things here, I'm going to need to have way more troops out here and prepared, which I, I don't quite have yet. I literally just have 48 divisions that are actually part of my main army. And then past that, it, it's all garrisons, which I'm going to need to build up here to defend the coast. Inevitably, we are going to go to war with the allies and that's, that's what's going to happen. But at this point, I have maybe a year before that's probably going to happen. And in the meantime, I need to build up as many forces and equipment as I possibly can. Sweden requests food stuff for ball bearings. Wait, what are they going to offer me here? Oh, ho, ho, ho. minus 5% or no, 8% production here for fighters. Yes. Oh my God. Yes. Am I going to take this? Are you kidding me? I would gladly take that. And honestly, at this point, we're not even going to do any of the focuses. We just, we need to generate as much political power as possible. So it is vital that during this time period, we literally do nothing. We just, we don't do anything. We save up as much political power as we can. And we try and get as many cores as we can because that's what we need here for our industry. That's how I'm going to make more than anything else. And there go the Germans after the Soviets. Okay, that is happening here. We are steadily building up our own supply of, well, pretty much everything that we need. And in the meantime, I'm just steadily building up my forces here, or at least that was the plan. I, I am, but it's going to take at least a little bit of time here. I actually realized I should probably have started cranking out divisions a long time ago, and I, I have not done that here. Oh, yeah, a million men casually. No, don't worry about it. It's fine. Because there goes the United States joining the United Kingdom, which means things are about to get exceptionally spicy. Now, it's June of 1942. Things have definitely kicked off in Europe as everything is kind of burning to the ground over here. But we, we are trying to do something very, very special indeed. Um, For those of you not familiar with a very lovely little type of car down in South America, there is a thing called a tuk-tuk, which um, I'd like to think that we are using every single tuk-tuk imaginable in order to be able to create this beautiful monstrosity of a division. Really, there's nothing special about whatsoever here, but um, th th there's something that I do realize. 
here. You see, my friends, I've been researching logistics companies basically this entire time, so I have a minus 20% to supply usage here. When you combine that with the fact that I already have the national ideas for supply use, this means that um, my supply use for every single one of my armies is at like minus 45% currently, which is a lot. And since each one of these divisions uses around 345 trucks, and I have managed to acquire um, a little bit of a surplus, you could say, that means we're going to have 120 divisions of Tuk Tuks that are ready to bring the fight to the enemy. So let's get that going now, shall we? Oh my god, that uses so much oil. That uses so much oil! <laughs> It, the fact of the matter is, is that I'm losing oil per day, even when I have 183 here, is absolute insanity. Oh, and I forgot, I'm going to get 10% less logistics usage here in a moment, because once I have this researched, that's minus 55%. It's about time that we finally start doing focuses here again, since we've been coring everything down in South America, and with this, I think that we'll actually be ready to start our attack. Specializing in heavy guns, let's see, modernization, oh my god, yes, yes, more, more attack. Yep, I, uh, I think that we've waited here enough at this point. Honduras, it's time for you to disappear. Feel free to join the allies. I would absolutely love if you did, if you could just be ever, ever so kind to me here. Because I'm about to blitz through your country immediately here with the power of trucks. No? You're not going to do it? No? Nope. You immediately capitulate? Did they join the war? No? Why is the war still... Oh, no, there it goes. Okay, well, that was anticlimactic. I was expecting for the actual full war to begin. What about you, Guatemala? Will you give me some fun? No? You're going to immediately capitulate as well. Is no one going to fight me, damn it? Oh, all of this and I still have war goals against Cuba and Haiti. How disappointing. I'm actually just going to have to straight up justify on Mexico now. Are you kidding me? It's going to take 250 days too. Oh, okay. Well, more building then. Don't mind me just further increasing my attack and defense for all of my units. Thank you. And we are 48 days away here. Okay, it's taking a little bit of time here to actually do anything. Soviets are currently not having a good time. In fact, what I think I'm going to do is uh international South America. No, 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 no. We're going to go ahead and destroy that faction and it said soviets hey can i can i can i join the common turn thanks thanks buddy i appreciate it that being said i'm not joining you no now it's time to prepare for the fun to begin then yep there is the justification we are getting our troops all into position here and this is uh Mmm, tuck tuck divisions are gonna about to go hard well this should be good hello mexico goodbye uh goodbye mexico <laughs> Oh, this is, uh, yeah, this, 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 this is about to be pretty bad over here, I think. There we go. That is Panama taken once again. Okay, add that to the slot here. And we are going to need to produce some more units to shore things up over on the side, I think. All right, there is all Southern Mexico taken. And oh my God, this is some rapid movements. We are moving so fast. We completely overwhelmed their numbers. And I think that that actually uh, wiped them out. We, we, we don't even have, we're not on mobile warfare, and yet the speed is simply too much. We're completely overwhelming Mexico. Yep, there goes Mexico. They fall. That's uh, that's excellent news for me here. Okay, beautiful. And so, oh, wait, I for completely forgot to take things over on this side here. Yep, we need to go ahead and wipe you all out. Thank you. Thank you very much. If you could just go ahead and die for me, I'd appreciate it. Oh, my God. Wait a minute. When the hell did I get over here to the United States? Oh, Lord. Oh, that is actually way faster than I thought would happen. Um. Okay, well, uh, did, 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 I, did I completely overwhelm? overwhelm their numbers how did i do this just call them all in call them all in against a war with the allies they've already united states has already lost a million men to japan okay well that explains probably where all their uh men are here at this point okay yeah this is this is gonna be a bit brutal holy crap wait a minute i wasn't even trying to do this i wasn't even trying to do this i was busy fighting here in south america how are you falling this fast just go, just go. If the United States is that weak, just push, just push. I don't care. Spread them out and let's destroy them. Here I am wiping out the entirety of the British forces in South Frickin' America. Meanwhile, the United States in just the span of like two months, this is it. They still have all their divisions and yet none of them, none of them are here. We're just walking into the country. Tuk Tuk divisions cannot be stopped. Okay, we have spread this out way too much and I clearly, clearly do not have the troops for this. Uh, g g just give us a moment, please. Okay, yep, even that. Now the United States is starting to actually push me back. They're actually launching their own attacks at me. I may have pushed a little bit too much. Just a little bit, guys. Just, just a little bit. Don't worry about it. We just need a couple more divisions to hold. Just a couple more. It's really not a big deal. Oh, God. They actually surrounded me, at least partially. Okay. Okay. This, this, that, that's actually not good. That's actually not good. <laughs> And it's a constant fight in the air to maintain superiority with this. We're, we're taking more of them out than they are of us. So there's that. Oh my God. They are literally attacking me all around. Why? Why? Why are you doing this? 
Oh my god, this is just a gigantic air battle over the Midwest. Like, I know that they can't really do anything, because I'm holding out here entirely in the South, but we got, what, over 200 divisions of motorized just sitting all across the border here, and they actually just cannot do anything? So, okay, all right, all right. I, I thought that at this point I was going to be able to sweep right through, but this is actually turning into a little bit of a fight, so that means I will actually have to start surrounding and destroying and uh, isolating individual units in here, I think. There we go, that's more like it. I realized from all this, I never actually built any anti-air or any anti-tanks, so... And I never built any tanks, which means even though I have air, I, I have basically nothing else. Which is a little bit of a problem for me, I think. You know, in this game, I never actually go and design uh, missiles, like, I never actually build those things, but you know, I, I, I think I could actually do that now. In fact, I think that we're going to do something that the Germans never could. Bomb the hell out of the United States. Okay, slowly but steadily, we are winning the air war. We are doing this. We're going to get this. It's just going to take a little bit of time. And by a little bit, I mean, oh my God, is it taking so much time? All right, we have a little bit of a breakaway to Chicago. Let's go ahead and keep on going. Keep it up. Keep it up. Keep it up. Okay, I'm slowly, kind of, sort of, running out of manpower. At least a little bit. It looks like all those bonuses that I had are actually starting to go away. So, you know what? We're going up to extensive conscription. Oh, uh, I guess I have a feeling we're about to bleed out our entire country. Yep, at least since we have trucks, we can move so fast that we can easily uh, outmaneuver and then around them from all sides even if it thins out our line a little bit it just means it's going to bait them to actually coming in and attacking us yep 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 just like that just like that nice and clean maneuvers thank you thank you buddies i appreciate it so much tuck tuck divisions cannot be stopped nope yep uh, another group just wiped out up here in the north and with that i think that we're good to go i know it says risky but honestly i don't care let's just let's just, just let's just push i think that we can yeah yeah we got it and after that because we are so much faster than them we can just completely overwhelm them that's what happens when you have overwhelming air superiority it just wiped out their entire world truck only is so broken <laughs> one breakthrough and honestly it's just it's it's gone it's gone you overwhelm their entire front line and that means they've lost yeah yeah i've killed off three million of them versus only half a million lost myself very nice communist feminist jesus who would have guessed oh my god did you seriously try naval invasion in phil really now why would you try to save your country like that that's pretty stupid man that's pretty stupid not gonna lie especially when i'm gonna be attacking over on this side now yep because there goes the united states we seize all their equipment and yeah that's uh it's pretty much a wrap over here okay that still means that we have to deal with canada and everything else so let's let's just keep on pushing for there yeah the casualties they, they, they don't matter they don't matter my friends they really don't matter at all you know guys on an interesting note if germany actually does fall against the soviet union then um there's gonna be a lot more places for a certain person to flee the last one to hold out vancouver with that canada falls beautiful canada falls and that means i'm just left with more stuff to clean up here in the icy hellhole of the north where for whatever reason the mexicans have fled to live with the northern natives Communist China join the Allies. Are you serious? Are you serious? Why? <laughs> I'm just trying to clean things up here, please. Yeah, no, there, there's nothing that I can do from that side here. Uh, so unfortunately, we're just, we're just gonna have to go to, um, to help Europe. Soviets, how the hell have you poured so fair against the Germans? What is even going on? Oh my god, that is what is going on. Okay, well, we're gonna need to fix that now, shall we? Oh my god, I can't even fix it. They don't have enough convoys. Are you freaking kidding me? Just, just accept all my convoys, please. Just have some freaking convoys so we can do things. Yeah, okay, now it's time to join then. <laughs> Uh, see, see, now we can actually do some pushes then. Oh my lord, we are going for, we are really going for it here then. All right, I need, let's see, more air bases. We're gonna need to build up a whole bunch more of those. The Soviets, for whatever reason, cannot get air superiority because they don't want to build freaking air bases. So on that note, actually, let's stop. Let's stop. We, we're going to need to get air superiority before we do anything else because this is honestly, this is terrible. We're not able to actually do anything from this side. The fact that the Argentinians have to come over here and try and save save the ass of the Russians is honestly this is just hilarious in way too many ways I don't even know how to explain this oh god the fact that I can't build any radar or anything over here is infuriating because <laughs> I, I can't see anything I am trying I am trying over here damn it but it's just it's taking forever to do anything screw it I don't care anymore I don't care just push just push I am tired of this I am tired of this damn it if I can move in and surround their entire army all right, we, we've taken enough of this air war that I believe that we should be able to just push down now. It's gonna suck, yes, but I don't care. Oh my lord, wow, we actually have surrounded a whole massive batch of them. Okay, yeah, that's, uh, that, that, that's gonna be a lot of deaths here. <laughs> 
fact that we can do this. I know it's 1946. I don't even play this forever. But the fact that Argentina can single-handedly take on the entire world pretty much by itself now with this is just... Th th this DLC is so broken for South America. It's just... It's so broken. What are we up to now? I've... Oh, wow. I mean, yeah, 1.6 million is definitely something here. Um, damn. There we go. And the more that we move in here, the faster we take the land. The faster we take the land, the more broken that it gets because that just means that they have less troops defending themselves and I move so fast that we completely overrun them. It's just, it's that simple. Yep, there's Berlin taken. Boom. And it's not Russian forces. No, 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 no. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. It is German forces. Well, I mean, Argentina. Yeah, we get those things screwed up all the time. You know, when you, when you have that large of a demographic that flees there after certain events happen, you get confused. The liberation of Paris and yet at the same time as soon as they get free it's not really free yeah no service by requirement here we're <laughs> i've kind of bled through a lot of my population here to be fair wait a minute C canada in the united states are you trying to come back no 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 that listen just 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 please stay in the mountains over there and die fall over already i literally just looked over at canada how did we take it that fast Oh my god, the war is not over. I, I won. I took everything here. But because Algier still exists, I can't do anything. You know what? Fine. Fine. Hey, Spain. A little bit of a roadblock for me there, buddy. Turkey joins it. No. Turkey. Turkey, no. Why would you do such a thing? Uh-uh. Uh-uh-uh-uh. I don't appreciate this, Turkey. I really don't. Yeah, see, that's that's what happens. That's what happens when you go and do such a nasty thing to me. I The trucks just take over everything. Just a bunch of Algerian tuk-tuks just, just riding through Turkey here. I love it. Spain, you wouldn't let me in, which is fine. We're going the long way around then. Can you imagine how absolutely horrifying of a site this is just a bunch of tiny argentinian trucks strapped to the absolute last inch with guns and they're just destroying literally everything yeah they're moving down here into africa and there's my war goal on spain which means um spain is pay wait no i should have the war goal i've been just oh no now there's my war goal and finally nationalist spain capitulates wait what did it actually fell wait was that just nationalist spain that's it <laughs> that's all that it is <laughs> Well, Spain, how the turns table. Hmm. You didn't expect a former colony to come back and bite you, now did you? Hmm. 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 But in taking over Spain, that means I can now attack Algeria from the other side. And that actually should theoretically finish off the war. At least over here on the Axis side of things. Yeah, there we go. Okay. <laughs> the German Reich. Oh, they even took part of Denmark. So I could I could just take this. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, that, that seems completely fair and reasonable. Make sure that we take as many states and all of the navies. And yeah, yeah, I think we've I think we've nicely uh fixed Europe a little bit. <laughs> This is so cursed. This is so cursed. We've now managed to gather a super navy of every single type of ship that you can imagine from every major navy in the world. Oh, and we're going to use all that to try and invade Britain. I love how in me invading, Bulgaria gets to live out its wet dream of controlling all of Alexander's empire, basically. Even more. <laughs> this is so dumb. Wait, did that say Ireland has... When the frick did Italy... Soviet Italy invaded Ireland? <laughs> oh my god what the hell man what what the what the hell and oh my god from stealing all the navies i have complete naval supremacy which means yeah yeah this is over it's over. The Tuk Tuk divisions have invaded England. And with that, my friends, it's over. I actually spent way longer on that than I ever anticipated because I wanted that to be a full actual conquest. And oh boy, was it ever. Because I have overwhelming majority of war score, this means that I can pretty much take whatever it is that I want. And no one actually has the points to be able to stop me. And there we go. I think, um, I, I, I think, I think that fixed things in the end, you know? We finally saved the world from the colonizers of Europe by colonizing all of them instead hmm. you know technically at this point if i want to i could go for a world conquest i could take out the soviet union i could do pretty much anything but really you could do that with any one of the south american nations from what it is that i've seen that is absolutely broken oh my freaking god the amount of population that you can build specifically as argentina is truly insane really any nation now controlling stuff in south america that was a ton of fun i played that for way longer than i actually anticipated doing so my friends thank you very much for watching this has been stakui and i ask that you let me know in the comment section below what it is that we should do next which nation it is that we should play 
I know I'm gonna place a, a like a community poll that is going to determine which one specifically we're gonna do. And either way, I appreciate all of you for joining me. Thank you very much, and I'll see you all next time. Goodbye, my friends. Praise call me Femi Jesus.